Good afternoon, good evening, folks. How's it going out there? Welcome back here to a quick update on a 6.0 earthquake coming into the uh, uh, Indonesia Islands area, looks like right now. This is a uh, 6.0. Uh, coming in here within the last 15 minutes or so across the Indonesia Islands region. USGS uh, not picking up yet the earthquake. Uh, this is off of the EMSC model uh, on the globe. So we'll go ahead and check out the EMSC data, see what we have here uh, regarding uh, this earthquake that strike just uh, a few minutes ago. 6.0, 101 kilometers deep, so fairly deep earthquake in this area. I tell you what, ever since that uh, proton event here that kicked up yesterday, we've seen uh, some elevated earthquake conditions out here. I guess this may be one for the books in terms of uh, the relationship between elevated earthquake activity and space weather events. But uh, not, you know, we kind of compared events last year. Remember during the super storms there, the Aurora events? Nothing. <laughs> Big time Aurora's down in the Florida, Southern California. Earthquake activity was at a minimal. So now whether it's related to CME activity, uh, the result of the plasma cloud hitting the uh, uh, magnetosphere, or maybe it has something to do with charged protons that uh, tend to stir up the plate dynamics out here somehow. But, uh, you know, it's, it's a little interesting theory there. We've gone back before here and looked at uh, years past uh, with large solar events, and there's definitely a strong relationship. But last year... I don't know. Uh, not a whole lot of relationship between space weather and earthquake activity last year during those big events. Proton events. Let me show you guys here real quick. Uh, I was just, by the way, I was just looking at 2024 YR4. They're stating that the chances of an asteroid impact in 2032 have dropped down to way less than 1%. Um, to me, their latest data still shows what looks like a, a pretty decent impact uh, in 2032. But we'll cover that. We'll get the updated data here and uh, do a video on that. But the space weather activity, still looking at some charged protons bombarding the planet. Look at the global D-layer absorption map there, showing uh, some some activity out there uh, affecting. Uh, well, if you're up here in this area in the polar regions, obviously it's going to affect some uh, radio communication systems. But this is the event not from a CME, but from a charged proton event when uh, that large M flare over here on the far side of the sun, western limb, blasted off a long duration event. Well, that shot off protons there at the speed of light from the sun. And uh, about seven or so minutes later, it was affecting us. And it's still affecting us here overnight and into the day today. Uh, so earthquake activity ramping up since that event. Still going uh, with a six pointer there in the Indonesia Islands area. Um, again, nothing from the USGS model. There is the signature right there of a decent earthquake. That may actually, uh, that's the Philippines right there. Let me see where that earthquake struck. That may actually be bigger than a 6.0. Uh, just looking at the seismograph station viewer, that uh, a good chance that may be a little bit higher than a 6.0. EMSC models are normally the ones to come in uh, first in reporting the earthquake, but... Uh, Um, a lot of times the the magnitude there is off. So these guys downgraded it to a 5.9, but I, I don't know. I'm thinking that may be a little bit larger. Just looking at the, the seismograph reading here on the Philippines. Also showed up there on Japan. That's a primary wave right there. Uh, eventually, we'll see some surface waves come across. It's always a primary wave first if you're in close uh, close enough proximity uh, to the epicenter. Uh, I mean, Japan's a ways up here, right, from that earthquake. So that's why I'm thinking that may be a little bit larger than a six-pointer, but uh, we'll have to check back on that. Nothing major across, uh, well, what do we got out here? 2.4 down in Georgia. Is that right? Let's see what we got here. Goodness. That fall, that two-pointer right now follows a 2.6 earlier this morning. What's going on out here? Let's take a look here at the uh, hazard map. Really not in a zone that uh, sees a lot of earthquake activity over here across the Charleston area and up north, but uh, specifically around this area of Georgia, not uh, so much in terms of historical data. Uh, let's see what we got out there. Any uh, oil fields? I don't know what Georgia has besides a lot of trees. That's one state. Uh, well, that's one state I've never been to. Goodness. Not many, but Georgia is one place I've never been to. 
Uh, let's check out satellite imagery, see what's going on there. Don't really know what's out here. Looks like some deforest, uh, deforest station there. A lot of fields kicking up lately. Uh, I don't see anything that would tell me there's oil fields out here, but you just, you never know. So yeah, a little, little interesting activity out there in Georgia. But, uh, and Tarversville. A lot of interesting names out here. So anyway, a little bit of activity stirring up. We'll watch these other zones, maybe the uh, New Madrid Seismic Zone. Okay, USGS coming in right now with that earthquake uh, as a 6.1. I knew it was a little bit of an upgrade. Uh, it's still possible they may get revised up a little bit higher. It has been reviewed, though, by seismologists. Uh, let's see what we got here for magnitudes. Some reporting a 5.9. They went with a little bit higher air reporting station there, but let's see what we got. A majority of these stations are averaging out to a 5.9. But, uh, yeah, USGS went, went with a 6.1. No tsunami uh, with this earthquake. It's really a, too small of an earthquake and really not in the zone that, uh, I guess if there was a, a big earthquake out here, something above 7.5 or so, that may be uh, producing a tsunami. But 6-pointer, 6 6.1, not so much. It is in an area, obviously, that's been seen a lot of, uh, or that has seen a lot of earthquake activity here lately in the crunch zone so we'll continue to keep an eye on that new zealand shaking down there across south island for the second day in a row a couple days or yesterday had some fours down here today some threes a lot stirring up out there uh, southern california let's double check that real quick just for a quick update uh, watching this area down south here brawley seismic zone swarming today with about 11 earthquakes of magnitude 1.0 up to a 2.1 that looks to be the largest in the sequence of events been a little while since we've had any swarming down here across this area uh, but of course hand in hand with all the other earthquake swarms we've seen outside that area just a good a good idea to be on guard out here today uh, with this movement kicking up around the san andreas fault we'll be back here a little bit later on this evening folks to discuss this and more of course if anything does pop off here in terms of larger scale movement we'll jump on the live stream here with an update i normally try <coughs> to produce update videos here for anything above 6.0 worldwide uh, unless we have like for an example a 4.5 in san francisco you know a 4.5 in new york or somewhere that's heavily populated uh, but aside from that we try to cover 6.0 and above all right folks have a good day got to get back out uh do some yard work here got the riding lawnmower out beautiful day out uh, 70 degrees Good day to cut the grass out here before a little bit more rain comes in here in early March. I can't wait. Have a good one. We'll catch you guys out here a little bit later on this evening.